Brothers and sisters in Islam, we thank you. We thank the Almighty Allah for blessing us with such a wonderful day. We thank Him for His mercies that He's bestowed upon us. We bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship except the Almighty Allah. And then we also bear witness that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and his messenger. Whosoever the Almighty Allah guides is really guided. And whosoever goes astray has nobody to blame but themselves. Today is the 27th day of Ramadan. 1441 years after the hijrah of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam which also corresponds with the 20th day of may 2020 i believe today is a wednesday alhamdulillah the past events that happened and uh, the kind of you know reactions that were associated to that happening i believe that since yesterday was an opportunity for us you know to forge on further to to bring a closure to the unfortunate incident since uh, the person that this whole issue revolved around justice tanko has gone to see the national chief imam he's going to see Haj umar i believe it was an opportunity for us you know to just soldier on move on correct whatever mistakes that you know happened and then pick lessons from it and then you know and and implement it in our lives as muslims in ghana and uh, i also felt that since yesterday happened to be the 27th night of ramadan and some narrations point to the fact that the 27th night of ramadan is you know the night of power so i felt that going into that night we we'll pray we ask the Almighty Allah to bless us, to protect us, to lift up this, you know, problem that we are facing. But lo and behold, we woke up this morning to another article. And uh, it's quite unfortunate that someone of that status could write something like that. It's very, very painful it's it's an article that eroded all that we've been trying to build over over this issue something that we were trying to you know mitigate and then move forward it's like you are driving or riding a bicycle and then someone throws in a spanner into the wheels you fall down and when you are falling down you hurt you get hurt and then it's more painful and this is what the journalist has done Another journalist, not the old one that we have been dealing with for the past few days. This new one is something that really, really pierced my heart than the first one. Yes, because he made statements in there that are more appalling, more disgusting 
than what the first journalist wrote because his statements are all full of pure lies. Is, is journalism gone bad? Is PR gone bad? And when I read the article, I realized that it's all trying to defend the statements made by the justice. That's it. So by trying to weave in some, you know, nuances and then bringing in the late Sheikh Tawfiq, hey, we would let this lie down. Bringing in Sheikh Tawfiq in that scene, we won't let this lie down. We won't let this go. It is a big muzzle that you've put into your mouth. You've beaten more than you can chew. And this muzzle that you've put into your mouth, even if you drink acid with it, that muzzle will not go down. You will spit it out. There are some people, they are untouchable. You don't touch them. Anas is not my problem. Anas is not my problem. The allegations you made against Anas and the story you made against Anas are all lies. They are all unfounded. But Anas is not my problem. My problem here is Sheikh Tawfiq. Do you know that man? Do you know who he really was? <laughs> there is a burgeoning security threat in Kumasi where a young Muslim cleric is engaged in radicalized evangelism, a situation which came to a head last week when he posted a vitriolic attack on Supreme Court nominee Justice Amadou Tanko. Or Justice Tanko Amadou. Where is the security threat in Kumasi? How is it a Bogani one? How did it begin? When did Anas start preaching in, in, in Dar al Hadith? When was that? For how many years has Anas been preaching? And tell me of a single incident where adherents of Dar al Hadith, of the adherents of Al Husn al Jama in Kumasi, have gone on a rampage, fighting and beating and killing people. When was that? Why will you sensationalize something like this? Why will you create a problem for us in our Muslim community? Why will you create this false sense of insecurity in our communities? That he is engaged in radicalized evangelism. What, what's, what's the meaning of this? What do you, what do you seek to achieve by, by, by writing such an opening statement? Even the headline itself, Radical Muslim Cleric Incites Youth. We are thinking of moving on forward. We are thinking of how to make good use of the situation. How to bring positive fruits from the situation. You have returned us back to the ice age. Do you think this article that you've written will not solicit any response? You think this bogus article that you've written will keep quiet and sleep? You think this article is not rather inside will not rather incite people against you and your personality? What kind of stomach journalism is this? You write this sensation this 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 headline which is misleading in no less than a reputable media house like Daily Guide. And Daily Guide, you allow this to be written on, on your paper. You allow this to be written on your paper, Daily Guide. Radical Muslim cleric incites youth. We know what radical Muslim clerics are doing across the world. And the kind of effect it has had on their securities, on their economies. Then someone comes and writes something like this on this network big network like this in a country like Ghana where we pride ourselves in peace and security where we pride ourselves in tolerance and understanding where we are the beacon of hope for peace and security in West Africa and then someone comes and then he writes a bogus article like this and then you think it's not going to affect us you think so why are we shooting ourselves in the foot why are we doing this to ourselves? Why is it that Muslims in this country, we cannot sit down and think twice before we do some things? Something as enormous as this. This is going throughout the world. If you think you are going to do this to bring down the young man, shame on you. Shame on you. Shame on you. You are rather giving him free PR. 
That's what you're going to do. You're going to give him free PR. If by writing this sensational message, if by writing this bogus article, you think you're going to call the attention of the security men to him, to investigate, to do what, to do what, you think by doing that you're going to bring him down or silence him or shut him. No, you're just going to give him free PR. People are now going to troop more and listen to him. Because the very facts that you stated against the young man is totally unfounded. It is not true that there is a Bulgarian security threat in Kumasi where a young Muslim cleric is engaged in radicalized evangelism. A situation which came to a head last week when he posted a vitriolic attack on Supreme Court nominee Justice Tonko Amadou. The attacks that you are mentioning, we all heard Anas's video. The seven minute, four second video when he was when he was commenting on the issue of Justice Tonko and the statement that he made. We all heard it. And most of the statement Anas made in there were more of if clauses. He didn't attack the man straightforward. And the statement that he made, at the end of the statement, what did he say? He said, you guys should pray for the man. He said, let's pray for him. So who attacks somebody and then after the attack, he says, let's pray for him, that may the Almighty Allah guides him. And if he returns, we will keep quiet. You are just scared that this man, this young man has a huge following. If he makes a statement, people listens to him. If he makes a, 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 a press conference, he's going to go straight and hits hard. And I don't know your proximity to the justice, but you are also doing PR gone bad. That's what you're doing. You are trying to massage and then, you know, find an excuse for the disparaging comments the justice made against Islam and against the Quran. I repeat and I say, yes, the justice earned. His position, as I said yesterday, is an opportunity for us to use that position for our own benefit to fight our rights as Muslims in this country. But then what you are doing right now, you are eroding that. You are now opening the justices back for further flogging. If you think by posting this statement, you are going to present the justice in a good light, you have done him bad. You have done him bad. That's what you've done. You've rather opened his back further for floggings because this man, the case has died a natural death. But then you just wrote an article to what? To seek to do what? To open up. You've opened the man up again because this your article is going to run for the next few days. An issue which was supposed to die yesterday, you've given it life again for the next three days. What was the attack on the personality of the justice? And the issue where Anna said uh, 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 about uh, not praying, maybe drinking alcohol, he was not speaking about the justice. Maybe you don't understand Hausa. If you really understood Hausa, you wouldn't think that Anas was attacking the man when he said some of these people. So please, go back to the video of Anas that seven minute and four second video he did where he said, Mumma mum may al -kunut. Go and listen very, very well. You might not like the choice of words. Yes, I personally don't agree with some choice of words. Yes, it's like that. But then put them into the right perspective. That yes, there were some words that unfortunately shouldn't have come out of Anas's mouth. But then to coin it to say their vitriolic attack he didn't attack the man. Go back and watch the video. The young man is said to have a large youth following aged between 10 and 19 who are gradually being radicalized. Most of them residents of his mosque in the Ashanti regional capital. This is also another lie. He has a large youth following, yes, aged between 10 and 19 who are gradually being radicalized. What was the yardstick you used in measuring them being gradually radicalized? What did you use? Did you visit Dar al Hadith to check what is being taught there? Did you visit Dar al Hadith to engage with them? Did you visit Dar al Hadith to see what is going on there? What was the yardstick for measuring that they are gradually being radicalized? And do you know how many hours Anas spends in Dar al Hadith? How many hours does he spend there? How many days does he have lessons there? 
most of them residents of his mosque in the Ashanti regional capital. Do you know why most of them are residents in the mosque? Because they are orphans. Dar al Hadith has orphan program. Orphans stay there. There is a school in there where they teach orphans. They take care of orphans. October 2019, I, I went to Dar al Hadith. That was the last time I went to Dar al Hadith to visit and to pay a Ketsi call. And Anas told me that they have more than 1,000 orphans that they take care of over there. And you should be we should understand what is going on in Dar al-Hadith. Dar al-Hadith is a humanitarian office, a humanitarian institution where orphans are being taken care of. There was a young man who sought help from an organization here in the United States when I came here last year. And I was sent with monies to help buy Qur'ans to give to the young man, to give to his halaka, students who study Qur'an. When I went there, I realized that that house where the young man is, is the house where it's a house where an old woman who feeds orphans. The woman died and her children took over their activities. But because of financial restraints, it was tough for the daughter to continue feeding those orphans and those orphans are from dal hadith and it is part and parcel of that family's you know legacy of feeding orphans in the community so the orphans in dal hadith after anas feeds finish feeding them they also go to that house to get extra food to eat so if you are saying that Anas has children between the age of 10 and 19 who is, rad who is radicalizing them, then with all due respect, you are peddling on truth. You are peddling on truth. Unfortunately, I'm using my iPad and these, the pictures of that incident is on my iPad. And I'll show you when I visited the money that I was given to come and help those orphans. They were eating, we gave them Qur'ans, and then they returned back. I returned back with them to Dar al-Hadith. And this has been the legacy of his father. And we'll come to that. You, hey, you, you, chewed, you chewed something big when you mentioned Sheikh Tawfiq's name. And we won't let you go scot-free. As for this one, we'll put aside the cool imam and we'll become hot imam. We'll fire you on this angle. Because you've touched something that is not supposed to be touched at all. We are not saying Shatofik was infallible or he doesn't make mistakes. No. But then, the legacy the man left and you are touching it. Oh no, you regret this. As for this, I'm telling you, you regret it. Because we are going to come hard at you. In my presence, when I was visiting Kumasi at a younger age, you find orphans. Running around Sheikh Tawfiq, he was their father. He was feeding them. His son has taken up that job. Feeding orphans. On Salah, the kind of clothes they buy to give orphans. The kind of animals they slaughter on the big eat to distribute to orphans. You are here telling us that those orphans are being gradually radicalized. What was the yardstick for measurement? How did you measure that they are being radicalized? Why are we doing this to ourselves? If an institution like Dar al Hadith is being accused of radicality and radicalism, and then that institution is closed down by the security uh, apparatus in our country, do you know how many people will lose in that? Do you know how many Quran memorizers have been produced from Dar al Hadith? Do you know how many students of knowledge have been produced from Dar al Hadith? And you are saying they are being radicalized? Do you know how many over the years? Do you know the story of Dar al-Hadith? Do you know how Dar al-Hadith began? Do you know where Dar al-Hadith is now? That you want to call that place a place where people are being radicalized? Hmm. He has already attracted the angst of the Muslim leadership. Which Muslim leadership are you talking about? 
especially when he called for the deposition of the chief imam of the Ahlu Sunnah wal Jama'ah sect. This is another big lie. Big. This is big lie. When did Anas call for the deposition of the of Had Omar? Whenever. When did Anas ever do a video to call for the deposition of the of Ajumar? When? When did Anas make a statement like that? Why will you just stay up in the night to produce this rubbish? Why? Why will you do that? For what? What are you trying to achieve? And your, and your reason is for giving a thumbs up to the Supreme Court nominee, Justice Amadou, over his performance during his vetting. After Ajumar's video, that unfortunate video, that happened. Did Anas make any statement? Why will you? Why? 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 Why will you do this to yourself? To go to the extent of accusing this young man of wanting the deposition of his father. When Al Umar publicly criticized Anas, did you hear him say anything? When the old man, our grandfather, criticized him, did you hear him say anything? Did Anas respond? That day, Anas, Anas's tafsir, we had more than 2,000 people eyeballing, watching. They were expecting a backlash for him to return. No, he didn't do that. But here you are spewing lies that the young man has done what? Has called for the deposition of the chief imam of the al al Jamaat. What is this? Why? The hot-headed cleric <laughs> rained insults on Justice Ahmadu Tonko and described him as a non-Muslim. No, Anas didn't call him a non-Muslim. He didn't do that. You are lying. He didn't do that. He didn't call him a non-Muslim. For the opinions he preferred on hijab and inheritance during his vetting session with the appointment committee in the House of the Parliament, that statement he made about the inheritance is the statement of disbelief. That statement that the justice made about inheritance is a statement of disbelief. If you say Islam has discriminated against women in inheritance, you are saying Allah has discriminated against women. And then that statement accusing Allah of discrimination is a form of kufr. But then in the Wabi to Takfir, we don't pronounce kufr on Justice Tanko because he said it out of ignorance because he doesn't know. If you look at the habit of takfir, a person can make a statement of disbelief, but then that person is not a non-Muslim. We will not, you know, uh, 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 label the person as a non-Muslim or a disbeliever, even though he made a statement of disbelief, because there are a lot of parameters that we must go through, and it's not the time for that. Anas did not make that statement that the guy is a non-Muslim. No. So check your fact right. Sheikh Anas Taufik's verbal attack went viral on social media, especially resonating among Ghanaian Muslim diasporan communities in Europe and in the USA. There is a widespread condemnation of the radical views of the young cleric, with one senior cleric taking him on for daring to, des to describe the Supreme Court nominee as a non-Muslim. This is also another lie. Who is that senior cleric who took Anas on? Because Anas did not even, even, even label the justice as a non-Muslim at all and even in the recent videos of Anas he even mentioned that yes someone like Justice Tanko is is a gem for us and that he is going to champion a cause for us Anas said it clearly publicly that something might happen a calamity might happen and the almighty Allah will change it into something good and Anas even gave the example of Amr ibn Aras and even in my video yesterday or the day before yesterday, I made mention of Justice Tanko in the light of Omar bin Khattab who had attacked Islam, but then later he became a commander in Islam, second behind Abu Bakr Siddiq. And I'm saying, this incident, the Almighty Allah could have allowed Justice Tanko to be appointed without any fuss, without any controversy. But then the Almighty Allah brought this controversy to serve as a wake-up call to Justice Tanko and his ilk, who are Muslims, but they're not well-versed in the religion, to, tra 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 to trace back their steps, understand the religion, and then they should forefront the fight for the rights of Muslims in Ghana. Yesterday, I was in a conversation with his PA, his personal assistant. And then we had a lengthy conversation. Justice Tonko's personal assistant. We had a, 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 a lengthy conversation on the mood of the justice. He has regretted what he has said. 
I was thinking of making a video today, an editorial to talk about how we are going to move on further part two. And then someone comes in and he throws a spider in the wheel to destroy whatever we are trying to build. Why are you doing this to ourselves? Hmm. Reacting to the effusions of the young man, an opinion leader in the Zungo community, Elijah Abdullahi Baba Sharif, CEO of Muaraba Media in Accra, said, it's unfortunate that we are allowing this to happen in our communities. What is What are we allowing to happen in our communities? It's now that you people have your voices because it's honest. Is it now that you people have your voices because it's honest? When people, when young men went and destroying properties of, of a pastor, even though that pastor made, made a statement that he was not supposed to make, we are not supporting that pastor. We didn't support the boys publicly, but privately I was happy they did that because that pastor has entered into our nose too much. So publicly, we are not happy. We condemn the boys. But then privately, we are happy because at least it will put that man into check. Did you people write an article like this to tell us to, 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 to stop this unfortunate incident happening in our communities? When we have drug abuse going on in our communities, did you say we should we should we should we shouldn't allow it to happen? When we have thieves, cocaine dealers in our communities, did you say we should stop this from happening? Oh, someone is doing al kitab was sunnah, and then it is pinching you hard. We should find a way to stop him, right? But then we have cocaine dealers, drug addicts, thieves, rapists in our communities. You didn't you don't talk about it. We have people who are using the name of Allah to become magicians and charlatans in the deen. You didn't think about stopping them or allowing or not allowing them to continue. The young man who does his thing in the open, he is the one that you think of stopping. We are waiting for you. Come and stop him. The relevant authorities must act now. To do what? Which relevant authorities? To do what? To do what? What action are they going to take? <laughs> Lest we experience an implosion, especially as the young man is beginning to use social media to campaign, to champion his radical cause. He is already on social media. He is one of the most widely watched clerics in the country. Whether you like it or not, go to his page right now. He is doing Tafsir 1.2K, 1.6K. I know today they are to reach 3K. People listen to him. That is the gift of the Almighty Allah. You can't do anything about it. People listen to him. People use their bundles to watch him one hour, one hour, 30 minutes. That's what the Almighty Allah has done for him. Because the people listening to him and watching him, they know what they are gaining. They know what they are getting from him. So if you are saying because he is using social media to champion his radical cause, he is already using social media. We are all using social media. He's there. And what kind of implosion are you talking about? What implosion? What is going to happen? Go to Darul Hadith. It's in the middle of Ababu. There's nothing happening there. It's not as if he has a group of soldiers or a group of barracks or he's somewhere in the bush in a cave where he delivers his les lessons. He's out there in Kumasi in the public, in the masjid, delivering. He walks free. He doesn't hide in any cave. So if you're talking about implosion, I don't know what you understand by implosion. And this is where, where, where I'm, I'm, I'm mad. This is where I'm mad. The unfortunate statement by the CEO of Marahaba. Oh, why will you make such a statement? Why will you allow these journalists to let you make such a statement? I recall a situation in the mid-90s when this young man's father, now diseased Sheikh Tawfiq, a.k.a. Sofo Nuria, was invited to Accra by the authorities and warned about his radical activities. Which authorities invited Sheikh Tawfiq in Accra in the 90s and then warned him? Who? It was it Rawlings? Or who? Who, who invited Sheikh Tawfiq in the mid-90s? Maybe who were young at that time, very, very young, who will not be able to recount or remember. Who invited Sheikh Tawfiq in Accra and then warned him about his activities? Who? Who had that or that city? Who had that energy, that power? Was it the IGP? Was it the BNI? Who? Was it the CID? Who invited Sheikh Tawfiq in the mid-90s to warn him about his radical activities? Who did that? 
For all I know, Sheikh Tofi continued with his methodology, with his dawah, until the day he died, that Thursday, 15 July 2004. I remember vividly up to this day. I was in high school, some 16 years ago, when the man died. Who invited Sheikh Tawfiq? We, 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 need, we are going to sue you on this statement. You have to show us who invited Sheikh Tawfiq to warn him about his activities. He was told that the authorities knew about his source of funding. This is a direct allegation and an attack on the person of Sheikh Tawfiq. Who was source his founding? Who was funding him? Who funded Sheikh Tawfiq's radical activities? You must tell us. Wallahi, you must produce evidence. Otherwise, you will stand on the day of Qiyamah before Sheikh Tawfiq. To, 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 you will stand in front of him. And before you go to the Akhira, we will deal with you squarely in this statement. We will sue you. We will sue you. You must produce evidence. The date, the time, the place, and the persons who invited Sheikh Tawfiq to warn him about his radical activities. And then those persons must produce the source of funding that you said Sheikh Tawfiq was being funded by who is funding him. Who funded Sheikh Tawfiq? This is where your hatred has gone to. This is where your enmity has gone to. To bring an, a dead person's statement and a lie against a dead person that you know his source of funding Anybody who knew Sheikh Tawfiq and Darul Hadith knew the man didn't have anything in his pocket. And that even when there was even time for food, if there is no money, he, he sends to that house. Well, what's the name of the house? There were two homes that he would send for food. And then they will bring the food. So this is a man who was being funded by which organization? With terrorists, Al-Qaeda. ISIS, Osama Bin Laden. That is the kind of impression you are trying to create here. Sheikh Tawfiq was being funded. And they want, to, they want him to stop or he will face the wrath of the law. Who was funding him? So this man is dead and then you are even still scared. This man is dead and you are still, you are still, you still have hatred against this man. Come and see the kind of people Sheikh Tawfiq has sponsored who are making inroads in the Islamic world. People he has taken care of. People he has pushed in life. Sheikh Ukasha Kameni, that when he recites you people go mad, is a product of Sheikh Tawfiq. When I started the program today, I was playing a, 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 a Quran reciter of Sheikh Muhammad Awal Hafiz. The other brother of Sheikh Ukasha is also a product of Sheikh Tawfiq. There is Dr. Amadou. He is in North Dakota right now. A few days ago, he sent me a message that I've come to the U.S. and I didn't, I didn't respond to him. He is a product of Sheikh Tawfiq. There is Mala Abbas, a product of Sheikh Tawfiq. He's in Philadelphia. He trapped between Philadelphia and Florida. He moves up and down teaching people. They are there. They are here. Even in New York City, it is the students of Sheikh Tawfiq who are gunning and manning in Bronx. So if you tell me that who, who, no, who, I don't understand. Who invited Sheikh Tawfiq in Accra and then to, 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 to warn him about his radical activities? Who did that? Who did that? Was it Rollins? Was it Atamos? Was it uh, Peter Namfuri? Was it DS, DF Anan? Who? Was it the CID boss at that time? Was it the BNI boss at that time? Why didn't the authorities in Kumasi rather invite him to speak to him by the authorities in Accra? Why? Don't the authorities in, in Kumasi know what Sheikh Tofuk was doing and his activities? Why? What kind of hatred is this? What kind of what kind of nonsense is this? What what kind of what what, what is this? Hmm. Continuing, he said, if today his son is treading on similar path, there is the need for action to be taken, and now that is how Sheikh Zakzaki and Muhammad Yusuf started in Nigeria. See, see, see. See, see, Zakzaki and Muhammad Yusuf, 
That is how they started. Then you don't know the history of Zakzaki and Muhammad Yusuf. You don't know. You don't know how they started. You don't know where they started. You don't know. You don't know. You don't even understand any of these things. Zakzaki was building an army in Nigeria. Muhammad Yusuf, his lectures. Listen to Muhammad Yusuf lectures and listen to what Anas does. And then you understand the difference between someone who is learned and someone who doesn't know anything. He's just using the verses to change things and then do whatever they want. Hmm. You are praying or you think that Zakzaki and Muhammad Yusuf, what they did in Nigeria, this is what you are praying for us. This is what you are praying for us. The kind of people Sheikh Tawfiq produced. The kind of activities that Anas is doing in Dar al-Hadith. You don't know about it. You don't want to know. You didn't investigate. You didn't go there yourself. You didn't even send anybody there to go and look at what is going on in Dar al-Hadith. What at all are they doing there? But because of hatred, you come out to write this bogus article. What do you want to achieve? If you are thinking of bringing a young man down, whoa, whoa, shame on you. Shame on you. You have rather given him free PR. He's not going to rise higher. There's nothing you can You can't bring him down. He didn't take himself up there. It is the Almighty Allah that took him up there. And people listen to him. Yes, you might disagree with some of his statements. That is natural. Even I personally, we have a good relationship. I disagree with some of his statements. And that is natural. But then, going to the extent of writing such an article to discredit him, to paint him a terrorist, a radical, to paint him as someone who is a security threat to our nation, you've gone too far. You've chewed more than you can beat and then you, you vomit it out. The National Chief Imam Sheikh Usman Nuru Sharbutu and Chief Imam Baru Sunil Jama have both blessed Justice Amadou during the courtesy calls he paid on them on Saturday. How is this statement related to Anas being a radical? You see, you are still trying to do PR gone bad. You see, because you've insulted your whole intelligence, you think you can insult our intelligence by thinking that eh, eh, you want to you, you want to paint him good. Just don't go. What he said is wrong. He's totally wrong. It is wrong today. It was wrong yesterday. It will be wrong tomorrow. Nothing. Do I? A dress donkey is still an ass. That statement he made is an unfortunate statement. It is a wrong statement. No amount of PR and control that you are going to do is going to, is going to make that statement right. No. What we want is that we want to move forward from that statement. This, your article came at a wrong time. And even if you had written a positive article, it should have been about going on forward, not about dragging us back to the Stone Age. Hmm. Yes, the National Chief Imam blessed him, yes. Ajumar blessed him, yes, because he's their son, and then he's going to occupy a position that we Muslims will be happy about. Yes, yes, I said this that yes, it is a position that I believe is well deserved. He worked hard for it, he got there. Yes, even though people might not, even though he might not have, have been appointed because he's a Muslim, but the fact that it is a Muslim, I believe, is a source of pride and happiness for us as Muslims. History has been made. And that it is a challenge to him. It is a challenge to him to make good use of that office to champion the rights of Muslims. And I said that to his PA that sent him this message that I said so, that his statements were unwarranted, they were unfounded, they were wrong. We criticize the statement. We are going to criticize the statement tomorrow. But then we believe he is in a position to help alleviate the problems Muslims are facing when it comes to rights in this country. He can do it. He has that argument. He is a lawyer. He is a judge. He knows the law. He knows it. All he must do is find sheikhs, sit next to the National Chief Imam or Haj Umar, let them explain to him the nuances of Islamic law where he understands that he can find a way to... Little by little for us to get, you know, solutions to the discrimination that we are facing as Muslims in Ghana. In a related development, the chief imam of the al Sunnah sect has said that there are more critical issues confronting Muslims than hijab. Explaining that the issue of schools is more important than the dress code. How is this related to this thing? How? How is this related? 
Why? Because you don't have any more to write. So let me just write anything. How is this related? Why did you miscrew what Hadumar said? Why? Why are we doing this to ourselves? Why is it that at any given opportunity, whereby we are supposed to forge ahead, we rather end up shooting ourselves in the face and then in the leg? Why? Why are we doing this to ourselves? Why are Muslims in Ghana always looking for an opportunity to bring each other down, to tear each other apart? Why are we doing so? Why is it that when we are going to criticize, we don't criticize constructively? Why do we have to spew lies against each other? Why is it that if I see something that you're doing wrong, I can't criticize you constructively? Tell you one plus two equals two. One plus two equals three. Why can't I do that? Why must I turn into insult? Why must I turn the, the story all around? You've posted it on Daily Guide. It is going to the world. It's going to show the kind of behavior we have as Muslims in this country. That is what you've done. And that's what pains me. We have reached a time whereby we must forge for it. As I said yesterday, this incident was an opportunity for us Muslims to use to champion the cause of fighting for our rights in Ghana. Then we wake up to a boom of, of an article eroding all that pushing us back to the Stone Age. Why will you do this to ourselves? Why will someone occupy the position as the PR? P.R.O. of the Hajj board. I don't know if he still maintains that position. You are the P.R.O. of the Hajj board. And you come out to come and make such a statement. I searched for you on Google. Google gave me scanty information about you. Google didn't give me any, any, any information. The information was scanty. I searched and searched and searched. I didn't get the right information about you. The only position I saw was you are the P.R.O. of the Hajj board. You were appointed in 2017. You sit on this chair seat of hajj and then you write this article to support what to promote what agenda is this article going to support islam is this article going to push forward the fight for rights is this article going to bring as good as muslims in this country why will you do this why will you do this? You go in there because you have access to Daily Guide. You just paste it on Daily Guide. Because Daily Guide is a huge news outlet and people will listen. People will watch. People will read. People will buy. This is what you've done. You think you've achieved something. You think you've done so. Congratulations then. Well done. Sanda Kukari. But then we will tell you. Anas is not our problem. Check topic that you've touched. Well, you have to bring evidence. You will have to bring evidence. You have to tell us when, where, and how Sheikh Tofik was invited. Oh, he was even invited. He was not arrested. Oh, he was invited. You even explain to us how he was invited, who he invited him, who and who sat with him. You will have to, you are a journalist. And then you are not a young journalist. You are a senior journalist. You know of all this information. You and, and the, 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 the CEO of Marahaba, he said that statement. The two of you be ready to face a writ from us. You will have to tell us. You will have to, you will have to let the security officers to declassify whatever information they have concerning the source of funding for Sheikh Tofik for his radical activities. You will have to produce that. And you will produce it too. Let me tell you, it's not every meat that you can chew. Mm. Some meat, you put it into your mouth, it is poison. You spit it out. And this meat that you are trying to chew or you put in your mouth, even with acid, it won't dissolve in your mouth. You, it will come out. At the time whereby you must think outside the box and move forward, you write this bogus article to bring us back. People who must know better. People who are at the forefront of our issues in Ghana as Muslims. Instead of you thinking, sit down to think of how to write something that will, that will pull us out of this problem and then find for us, you know, a way for it. No, you didn't do that. Let me take them back to the 90s. And then you've done that. You've taken us back to the 90s. What we did to Amil Lamte is small as compared to what we are going to do to you.
My final message. <laughs> Anas, the Almighty Allah is for you. Don't worry. Don't worry. The Almighty Allah is with you. And if people can bring you front page or forefront or whatever in a newspaper, you've gone far. You've gone far. Seriously, you've gone far. And the Almighty Allah is with you. That's all. That's all I have to say for you. I agree with your statement. Islamophobia is a multi-million dollar industry since 9-11. It pays so well for journalism. Yes. Yes. People write sensationality about Islam. Even Muslims, they write about it. So I agree with your statement. So the Almighty Allah is for you. Like Allah, Ya Anas. And that's it. That's all I have to say for you. Like Allah, Ya Anas. And that's it. So Muslims, my final statement to us all. Let's move on. Let's move on. That's all. People like this who want to frustrate our movement, they are there. There's an old African proverb that says, if there's no enemy within, the enemy without can do us no harm. So it's part of occupational hazard. We have people like that who think like that, who will bring in all kinds of things just to credit, discredit you. It's part and parcel of life. Anas, <laughs> And the rest of the scholars of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, Lakumullah, Allah is with you. Don't worry. Sheikh Fafana, Laka Allah. Sheikh Abdul Malik, Laka Allah. Mansur Anas, Laka Allah. Don't worry. All the young scholars of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah who are trying their possible best to teach people Islam because you do Kitab wa Sunnah. And sometimes the statements do not go down well with some people. They feel it is radicalism. They feel it's terrorism. Don't worry. Lakumullah. Dr. Abdulaziz Farhan. Lakumullah. Sheikh Abdul Razak Salah. Lakallah. All the scholars of Al Sunnah wal Jamaa who are preaching on Kitab wal Sunnah. Lakumullah. Stick to what you are doing. Don't turn back to look at anybody. If you say you are going to respond to any dog that barks at you on the way, you wouldn't get to your destination. Teach the people the sunnah. Abu Bakr Muhammad Adam of Achiasi, like Allah. Sheikh Layli of Takuladi, like Allah. Abdul Aziz of Cape Coast, like Allah. Abdul Malik Maiga Kaswa, like Allah. Mansur Anas Techiman, like Allah. Anastrophic Kumasi, like Allah. Allah is with you. Continue doing the job. It won't sit down well with everybody. Let me tell you, it won't even sit down well with us in Al Sunnah wal Jama'ah. It is like that. Within ourselves, we will disagree on an issue. It is like that. Malik and Shafi disagreed on an issue. But then, Lakumullah, that's what I'm telling you. The Almighty Allah is with you. Continue teaching people Kitab wa Sunnah. If you make a mistake, come back and retract and correct the mistake. Lakumullah. Nobody, not everybody will be pleased with what you are doing 100%. Not even those of us with you in al Sunnah will be pleased with what you are doing. It is like that. It is natural. But then, Lakumullah. Allah is with you. Be resolute. Clean your hearts. Do ikhlas and continue soldiering on. That's it. The elder scholars that we have from Sheikh Ado, from Dr. Bashir, from Dr. Saeed Adam of Kumasi, from all these big, big scholars who have done it over the years up till now. Lakumullah. Ahlu Sunnah wal Jamaa, Allah is with you. An attack on Anas and Darul Hadith is an attack on Ahlu Sunnah wal Jamaa. Understand that. Any attack on Anas. And Dar al Hadith and Sheikh Tawfiq is an attack on Al Sunnah wal Jama, and then we will defend him. Where he goes wrong, 
we tell him he's gone wrong. Where he does right, we tell him he does right. That is the akil of al al Jamaa. But if you come and then you write such a bogus article trying to discredit him, we will meet you boot for boot and squarely. Yes, know that. All the scholars that we have on the manhaj and aqidah of al sunnah al Jamaa, irrespective of the differences of the nuances that we have between us, Wallahi lakum Allah, we are with you. We need to form a united body stronger. You see this thing? It's, it's, a hyena or a wolf doesn't eat from the flock except the flock that has left. So if we are all together, we need to be all together. It is a wake-up call for our sunnah wal jamaah that infighting and in bickering is not going to help us. There's going to be difference of opinion. That is natural. But then, let's look at what is happening. An attack on Anas and Darul Hadith and Sheikh Tawfiq is not about, oh, this is Darul Hadith. Oh, it's not about, it's only Anas. Oh, it's not about Sheikh Tawfiq. It's an attack on all of us because we share the same values. So if they start picking up Anas because he's vocal, arguably he's the most vocal Sheikh now in Ghana. You go to his Facebook page, Check all the other sheikhs you have in Ghana and compare them to the page of Anas Dar al Hadith. He's the one who is most watched. He's the one who is most watched. So let's pick him out. And then the rest, no, 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 no. Let's. You think it is something small? We are going to face you squarely. If you touch one of us, you've touched all of us. And we are not going to agree. We are not going to sit down quietly and let you just touch him. No. We are not saying he's a saint. We are not saying he's, he doesn't make mistakes or he doesn't make wrong. We are not saying that sometimes he doesn't say some things that he must not say. Yes, he's a young man. He will say he will commit mistakes. He will commit errors. But then, if you are going to write an article like this without pointing out justifiable things that we are not going to support you. We are going to support him 100% Mia Fimia. So all the other scholars, young scholars that you are listening to us, the Almighty Allah is for you. Don't worry. So long as some people will get up and go and do damage control and PR, we will also do PR for you. We will do the damage control for you. Don't worry. Leave them to us. Who match them boot for boot. Thank you very much for listening. May the Almighty Allah safeguard us. It's quite unfortunate that we are in Ramadan and then this is happening. Well, I was very disappointed to see this article on the newspaper. Why? This is too bad. Sheikh, we need to stand firm and fight for this together, inshallah. That's what we are going to do. So it's a wake up call. Al Sunnah al Jamaa. If we are going to still continue in bickering, in fighting, because hey, we don't agree with you, because you've said so and so, this is what is going to happen. They are going to tear us apart. They are going to pick us singly and then tear us apart. It is the opportunity has come. This article is also another lesson for al Sunnah al Jamaa. This article is another opportunity for al Sunnah al Jamaa for us to readjust and re strategize. The video of Sheikh Umar that came out was also another opportunity for Al Sunnah Jamal for us to sit up again in terms of the structures. The structures are there. Yes, I know they are working. But then concerning issues surrounding Sheikh Umar, it was an opportunity for us to have a look at it. This article has exposed things clearly for us that yes, it's not everybody you open your teeth to me loves you. No. It's not everybody. And this article has exposed some of those people with those minds. And we are going to meet them squarely. Yes. If you touch one of us, you've touched all of us. We are not going to sit down and fold our arms and watch you discredit the kind of reputation this young man is building. No. We are not going to agree. At all. The kind of work he's doing. The kind of humanitarian and philanthropic work he's doing. The kind of education he's giving to people. Because you can't do it or because you are full of hatred and jealousy, you want to pull him down by writing a bogus article. <laughs> you don't know. The Almighty Allah safeguard us.
Sheikh, I think it's high time we, the youth, start occupying the spaces of journalism and politics to be specific. Yes, it's more than high time. But then the problem is, it's not about the older people. No, I don't have an issue with the older generation. No. As a whole, no, I don't have an issue with them. The issue is that the older generation shouldn't frustrate the younger generation. That's the problem we are having. If the older generation will frustrate the younger generation, then we have no future. We have no future at all. The older generation shouldn't frustrate the younger generation. That's the problem. You can't write an article about a young man like this when they are all full of lies. None of the statement that you made in there is true. You just showed your bitterness. And I'm even I'm, I'm even amazed Daily Guide will allow such a statement, such 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 an article to be pasted on their wall. Why would Daily Guide allow such a bogus article to character assassinate someone without any evidence, just conjecture, just magic? Someone he just created something out of his mind and then he posted there. Why would you do that? Why would Daily Guide allow him to do that? You will surely hear from us. It is not only this video you are going to do. You will see um, a riff. And this time, we won't do out of court settlement. You will have to prove all these allegations that you've made against Anas. I had one lawyer said, hey, uh, Anas is liable to what, 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 what. He too, he doesn't understand how sad is why. Maybe it, it is informed by what that lawyer said concerning that Justice Tonko can, can sue Anas. Justice Tonko can sue. No problem, he can sue Anas. And then they meet in court. No problem. You, the lawyer, you can, you can, you can, you can be the lawyer for the judge. No problem. But this statement, we are going to sue you people. Don't worry. We are going to sue you. Because now it's the time for the courts. We are going to sue you. And Justice Sanko is going to sit on that case. And then we will sue you on that. In all my jail, I safeguard us. Thank you very much for listening to us. Uh, unfortunately, this incident has brought a standstill to the Ramadan series that we are having. But maybe tomorrow, inshallah, if nothing again, nothing crops up again, we will look at, we will look at something else, inshallah. Thank you very much for your time. May the Almighty Allah safeguard us. May the Almighty Allah protect us. And Subhanakallah, Muhammad, Nashadu Allah, Ilaha Illa Anta, Astaghfiruka, Natuhu Ilaika, Assalamu Alaikum, Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.